Good afternoon, boys and girls. We left off talking about uh, independent dependent variables. And with your research questions and hypotheses now submitted, I want you to begin to think about independent dependent variables as relates to your own particular project. As you recall, we talked about how um, what we're trying to test with our hypothesis is um, some degree of cause and effect. Variables help us to establish these relationships or test these relationships. The independent variable, again, is what causes the effect, whereas the dependent, dependent variable is dependent upon the variance of the independent variable. Let's look at these a little bit more concretely. So as you see there, and as always, this lecture will be recorded and posted. I highly recommend, to, uh, recommend that you revisit this as you go through your research project. And of course, most significantly, India Cheney, make sure that you're keeping up to speed with the reading. Uh, and the author does a really good job of uh, laying out some of these concepts for you and giving you some really uh, solid examples that I think uh, will help you for your own work. Again, uh, oftentimes, uh, students attempt to pass this class by only uh, looking at the lecture notes. And in spite of uh, me continuously telling students uh, from the time that I've been here that that's the, uh, usually not a strategy for success, some of you all may have even experienced this firsthand, firsthand a time or two. Many students continue to think that they uh, can have shortcuts to this work, and unfortunately there are none. And it's budding social sciences, you shouldn't want any anyway. The kind of things you're expected to do here will certainly be asked of you in graduate school. And uh, you don't want to try and uh, learn that on the fly at that point. Many of you all have had some experience with independent and dependent variables in some form, even if you didn't label them as such. So there's a relationship between one thing and the other. So as we talked about before, the taller you are, the better your chances of being able to uh, make it an MBA. Obviously, only being tall is not gonna help you do that, but it gives you a better opportunity than if you're my height. Being black puts you at a higher risk of, causing di of, of having diabetes. Does that mean that being black causes diabetes? Is being black the only factor that is related to somebody having diabetes? Of course not. But there's a relationship between two variables. There's a relationship between two variables. There's a relationship between two variables. Over the next couple of months, exploring a relationship between two or multiple variables, India Cheney, will be your task. Your hypothesis in many ways should be set up this way, or at least approached this way in your mind. So for example, we know that education is correlated with um, the behavior of voting. There are some groups that vote a lot. There are some groups that vote very little. As always, the most important question in social science is why, why? Deshaun, we don't think that, that um, these differences between groups are just coincidental. So if black people are getting uh, diabetes at a higher rate, we don't believe that's just happening for no reason. So we wanna look at what variables are causing these differences between groups. So one, one way that we can explain voting patterns is through the, le the years of formal education that a person has. The more years of education, the more likely you are to vote. The more that you smoke cigarettes, the more likely you are to develop lung cancer. Does this mean that everyone who smokes cigarettes develops lung cancer? Of course not. It makes it more likely, more likely. The more education you have, uh, Kisana, the higher your income is on average. Does that mean that uh, going to school for a billion years is going to guarantee you a high income? Of course not. Are there people who um, have less, uh, less education than us that have the potential 
and are currently uh, currently enjoying a higher income, such as LeBron James, who only uh, has a high school degree, diploma. But we don't look at the exceptions in science, Deshaun. We look at what generally happens on average. On average, student grades, again, like, you know, uh, I know this may come as a shock to some of you all, but your grades is a direct reflection, in most cases, of the work that you put in. I'm not naive. I know that there are some college classes, high school, elementary classes, where you don't have to do much work at all to get an A or B in that class. Luckily for you, India, this is not a class like that. And this is a class where this is certainly will hold true. So one of the things we talked about before, let's double back that I really want you to pay keen attention to, right? I think I had gotten this far, let me see. Maybe we have not. Okay, I've not gotten that far yet. So coming back into the lecture, we talk about the purpose of social research. We're mapping out a topic that may warrant further study later. Or we're describing the state of social affairs. We also try and provide reasons for phenomena. So Throw some of these out. Uh, I imagine some of you all probably were working on your research questions, unfortunately, about 15 minutes ago. For those who did that, I'm going to strongly encourage you all to uh, try and uh, get dropped out of this class. As you are already, unbeknownst to you, you're already woefully behind. And as some of your classmates can tell you, once you get, be get behind, it becomes very difficult to get caught up. The good news is this class is um, offered again next term. You can even use the same research topic. But uh, this is not a class that you want to be behind in. For those who were able to spend a little bit more time on their research questions and hypotheses, what were some of the questions that you submitted today? What factors lead to juvenile gang membership? OK, good. And this is Nash. Are you looking at this nationally? Yes. So what she's doing here is trying to explain. At the end of this research, Deshaun, she's going to be able to explain. What's your hypothesis, India Cheney? Um, some factors that lead to gang membership may be like male guidance, protection, and financial gain. Okay, good. So what she's going to do over the next couple of weeks, Maya, it's to test out whether or not that's true. And we'll talk about the reasons why. But she, she again, some people have choose to join games. Some people choose not to. We believe that, Maya, we can explain the reasons why. Is it going to be a perfect explanation? No, probably not. India already has given some thought to the reasons why. She next has to go and do some research to find out if her hypothesis is true or not. What are some other research questions? Uh, I did, how does police brutality affect African-Americans in the, in the Af how does police brutality affect African-Americans in the African-American community and the economy? Okay, we may have to tighten that question up a little bit, but it sounds like you're trying to uh, explore the economic cost on a black community specifically for police brutality. And yes, we'll sir. Talk about, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yes, sir. And uh, when I was searching up my question and stuff, I was trying to figure out like uh, something that's, you know, happened recently, like I had mentioned you. And uh, one thing I'm noticing is the economy in these places that uh, the brutality, police brutality is affecting, you're getting a lot of riots and stuff. So you're getting a lot of businesses torn down and you're getting, so police, it's just a lot to it that I, I could put into that question. No, absolutely. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And again, one of the things that we'll do in coming weeks is um, I will spend more time talking with each of you all individually. And we can talk through um, some of these processes to get you to a, 
um, you know, a really strong question that really speaks to what you want to find out. And there's no wrong answer to that. So again, he's trying to explore because unfortunately we may have police brutality again. And perhaps Deshaun can give us data to show just how costly that is. Economics is a really good way to motivate change in America. This society, like most modern societies, is generated by money. That if you want to understand the reason for, for almost anything, money is usually at the root of it. So perhaps we can, Ill, we can um, use some data to show economically how police brutality like, you know, um, impacts society in Black communities. Because obviously just showing how it impacts Black life, uh, that doesn't seem to be very persuasive. Any other research questions? I got one. What's your name? Um. What's what's your name? Oh, this is Ashley. For sure. Um, I looked up a question and chose um, depending on the temperature, will my plant will a plant grow effectively? Wait, say the last part. Depending upon temperature, what? Will plants grow effectively? Now we know that, and that, that's probably a better question for um, the biology uh, class. So we'll have to get something like um, in terms of social scientific, in terms of human behavior. We wanna have questions that are related to human behavior. And believe it or not, temperature has been correlated with human behavior. So you, so you may need, well, well, you'll definitely need to change that up a little bit, but you can use something that describes yeah. How uh, temperature impacts human behavior. Okay. So again, like, you um, know, the main thing I want you all to think about here is just how you're going to set up your research as we go through the, uh, go uh, down the line. Because again, right, I hope that you all have been looking at the syllabus. And we've talked about, you know, um, the research question assignment, which is due today. Does anybody know the final assignment? A presentation. And what's tied to that? Research paper. Very good. Is that in One extra credit point, yes. Ten, ten extra credit points, India. Very good. <laughs> so along the way is all types of things that are building towards that research paper where you're not going to be expected to do this all at once, Ashley. Everything should build off of itself. As you begin to test out your, so you got these research questions, you have these hypotheses. The next thing you need to do, Ashley, is go and begin to collect your data. Data comes in two forms, qualitative and quantitative. India Cheney, can you restate your research question and your hypothesis again? What factors lead to juvenile gang membership? And my hypothesis is, um, factor, the factors that may lead to juvenile gang membership is financial gain, protection, and male guidance that they lack from home or whatever. Okay, good. Tell me those, uh, tell me those hypotheses again, the uh, financial what? The financial gain, male guidance, and um, protection. So what India just described there are variables. Those are variables. Variables, again, Deshaun, are related to cause and effect that she believes that we can explain game membership based upon if it is it financially profitable if a team has a choice between working at mcdonald's or joining this game and going to other industries is it worth their while are there male figures in the community and then what was the other factor again um protection protection that is there a threat of other rival gangs or other crimes that being in this game can protect um, this uh, person from. So it's a lot there, right? So let me ask y'all this. So when we, so India, you're gonna have to look at all types of data. It's gonna give you some clues to answer the, um, that help you answer that question. When we talk mm -hmm. about quantitative data, it's numbers. Qualitative data is things that we can kind of see, touch, and feel. So let me give you a couple of examples. Well, let me ask y'all some examples. 
what are some numbers, some numeric measures we can use to determine health? What are some numbers that we can use to determine if an individual is healthy or not? Um, like a week. Good. So we can tell, so show how much they weigh. So if somebody that's my height weighs like 300 pounds, that might be a bit of a problem. It may suggest that I'm not very healthy. What else? What are some other how numbers? We, go ahead. I'm how sorry. How about their temperature? Good. Excellent. Right now during COVID, we're doing temperatures. So we can you look at that number. Like, you know, so my brother um, is, has recovered from COVID. And when this temperature got up to 102 degrees, that obviously was a sign that something was going wrong. Excellent. What are some other numbers? Come on, y'all. Y'all been to the doctor before? Their heart rate. Who said that? Kisana. Excellent, Kisana. So good. We can measure your heart rate. Like again, if things are a little bit slow, that may be a sign of some blockage. Excellent. Any other measures? Any other numeric uh, measures? As um, what's health? the X-ray? No, that's not. That's not numbers. My bad. Um, blood pressure. Yeah, that. Good. Who said blood pressure? Kisama. Good, Kisama. Blood pressure. We can measure cholesterol level. As an asthmatic, when I go in, they have me blow through a tube where they can measure my um my peak flow. That if again the number is higher, okay, you got a lot of area on uh, lungs right now. If that number isn't moving very far, oh man, we got some problems. So that's ways that we can look at, we can measure your health by numbers. But what are some ways that go beyond numbers where we might be able to see with our own eyes how healthy or unhealthy a person is? They got nothing to do with numbers. Oh, now the X-ray. Say it again, India. The X-ray? Like Good. The X -ray? Good. So there's an X-ray where we don't see a number, but we can see, okay, man, okay, I saw this number with your, um, with your blood pressure, Kisana. Now with this x-ray, I can go and see qualitatively what's actually happening that's causing this number. Good. What else? They're breathing, like if they're wheezing. Good. Excellent. Excellent. So I've been having shortness of breath the last three days. I can't put a number on that, but I know that there's something different that's happening. Good. What else? They, they, they don't have to do with numbers. What are some other ways? Uh, MRI. Okay, good. Good. So with the MRI, we can see things like, you know, um, that the numbers may not tell us and let us know what's going on. Other ways, like you're telling, if you go to the doctor, Deshaun, and you tell me that you're in pain, I can't put a number on that, but I know that I've been having, like, so my mother told me recently she was having chest pains. They use the um, tessoscope, that's what you call it? Tessoscope? Good, but, but that's probably going to give us a number. Oh. An EKG. Yeah, the, the also, yeah. Good, also a number. Oh, that's a number. Too. Mm. Um, I didn't know that. <laughs> Me either. I was like, oh, okay. yes. Uh. So there's an EKG, EKG rate that is measured. Um. What about, again, some other ways that you can look at somebody and maybe see that they're unhealthy? You have not done any measurements. The color of their skin. Excellent. Like the color of their skin. Good. So when I was a little, when I was a little bitty kid, my mother came in and saw that my black ass had was turning blue. She didn't have any numbers to see what my peak flow was, but she knows that it's not normal for human beings to be blue, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes any they can be orange like your president, but usually not blue. <laughs> So that's okay. So skin, so skin discoloration. What else? Any other ways that we can look at somebody and maybe tell that they're not fully healthy? Like if they're sweating. Excellent. Good. Very good. And they ain't doing nothing. Good. I mean, if they just fat, period, that you just know they ain't healthy. Say it again. Well, I did. Yes. If they just beg and then you just know they're not healthy. Good. So they're good. That sometimes we can look at so, just how big a person is. Like I said, if all of a sudden, like, you know, when uh, we get back face to face and not to gain 100 pounds, 
Like, you know, that there's a reason that that happened. And y'all might be like, okay, man, Dr. Muhammad, you okay? Everything's good? But we also have to be careful because I'm sure we all know some real thin, skinny people that may not necessarily be very healthy. Mm-hmm. You know, so, but good. So with this in mind, right, in quantitative and qualitative data is sometimes hard to discern. As you go through your research, you want to be able to look at numeric stuff. So, so let's go back to India Cheney's variable specifically. What was your? Tell me one more time. And look, follow along. My sense is, Dr. Thomas, some of y'all not paying attention out there. You're doing yourself a disservice. Always again, like, look, if you got other things to do while class is going on, it is totally all good. This class is for you. It helps if you're really engaged here, as opposed to this being background noise. If it's background noise. I would really encourage you to come back and look at it on YouTube later on where you can really focus on it. But this is a good time for us to have some interactive discussions that will help you in your own personal research. So I do encourage you to come to class and come to class on time, Maya Williams. We're going to start at 2.30 on Tuesday just for fun. But if you're not able to fully engage, um, you're, you're not really doing yourself any uh, you know, uh, service. I'm not keeping attendance points in a normal sense, so uh, you're not doing me any favors by showing up and playing uh, NBA 2K while this lecture is on in the background. So make sure again that you try to engage. India Cheney, tell me your hypothesis again. Um, factors that lead to juvenile gang membership is financial gain, protection, and um, male guidance. Good. Okay, so financial gain. So first off, what do you mean by that? Like, they make money while they're in the gang, like that means they drug dealing, robbing. Yeah, so, so let's change that. Let's change that variable to profit. Okay. And write this down, Idiot Cheney. So perhaps they make more of a profit by being in the game than they would otherwise. How might we measure that? Um, if you go from when they first joined to like, like what in, like they change how they dress. Nope. No. Profit, pro- profit, it, pro- I don't measure profit by how somebody's dressed. I mean, no money they are. There we go, money. Don't overthink it. You, Cause you mix it, you're mixing up your variables. It's all types of people who are, who may dress well, that ain't got a whole bunch of money. And just because, and just because you might see me in a new pair of Jordans, does not mean that I, Kareem Muhammad, paid full price for them. I'm not a crazy person. I know you I know you out there paying full price for your Michael Kors purses and stuff, idiot, but other people are gonna be on some other stuff. <laughs> so you cannot judge it just by that. But profit is how much money, how much money have they been have they made since they've been in this game? Either through robbing people, selling drugs, that we can see that we can find a way to measure. How much money they had before they came in the game? How much money they had after? What about um, male support? How can we measure that? And I'm t- I want everybody's input here. How can we um, measure the, the level of male? Because we believe we can put a number on almost anything. How many um, of them have a father in the home? Excellent. That's one way. Is that the only way? No. What's some others? Mm. Anybody? Dr. Muhammad. Yes, sir. I got a I got a question from what you were saying earlier about the quali- qualitative uh, data, like the nine numeral data. How, how hold, can you hold, in a social? Hold that question. Don't lose your question. Hold your question for one second. I want to unpack this concept with India uh, specifically for just a moment. But it, it sounds like your question is an important one. So hold on to it for just a second. But in the meantime, can you all tell me, how can we put on a number? How can we um, I, uh, use a number to identify um, black, uh, for lack of a better term, black role modeling in the neighborhood or community? India mm-hmm. has said, we can, so again, we know we have numbers, we got data that shows the percentage of families that have a male, um, a male head of household. But what are some other things we could use? I want you to be really thoughtful about this. Um, 
I'll give you a mulligan here, India Cheney, in the interest of time. Okay. We can measure the percentage of black me of adult black men in a given community. So I'm gonna tell you one thing for sure that you're probably gonna find in that data that in some communities like the South Side of Chicago, it's just not a lot of adult uh, men in these communities as much anymore. Okay. A lot of them been killed. Very many have been institutionalized. So you're right that okay, you ain't got a father in the home, but that ain't the only um, black role. Uh, ain't the only source of black role models. That school, church, exactly. exactly. And in a lot of these places, a lot of these juveniles are not coming in contact with any black males that are going to give them any type of like real strong guidance outside of the gangs. The only black males that they come in contact with are dudes who are gang bangers and drug dealers in some communities. Mm -hmm. So in explaining why there's a high uh, rate of gang membership in one community than another, one hypothesis one hypothesized factor could be just the presence of black males within a given community or city. And then what was your third factor? Um, and protection. Okay, good. So protection from what? From, um, from violence. Okay, good. So how can we put a number on violence? Can we? You can, you can do the crime rate in that particular area. Excellent. And specifically India, they will give you the violent crime rate. So we know, for example, that Charleston, South Carolina is far, far, far more violent than my hometown of Chicago, Illinois, where we have hardly any violent crime at all. That's a lot. <laughs> Yeah, and that was a joke. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's violent. Man. Right. <laughs> right, but that's a way, like, so one of the reasons why you hear Chicago so much in the news all the time is that, it's, that by using these measures, there is more violent crime there compared to other cities. And as I told you before, social re at the heart of social research is the question why. And that's a question that is related to Chicago. Um, many people are still not fully sure of. So with this in mind, you may not get, you will not get full answers to your questions at the end of this class, Kisana, but hopefully you'll get a bit of a better uh, understanding. Deshaun Williams, do you recall your question? I asked about qualitative data and uh, you were saying hey, it's, it's not numbers. So how, in the, how does that fit into a social research assignment where you know you, you collecting data on everything you're doing like like with me i can't just say uh police is pull over black people pe on black people just because they're black without having like no kind of data behind it so that, I'm, that why i'm i'm asking that question great question so look if i tell you that today in Columbia, South Carolina, today on I-77, there were 50 black people that were stopped and 50 white people that were stopped. If I only use those numbers, does that mean that there was no racism? Hey, I, I stopped the same amount of people. Does that mean that, there, that um, there's no racism? No, sir. Anybody. If I stop the same, if I stop the same amount of people by race, that shows that there's no, no racism, right? No. no. Right. Now, why do you say no? Because this, you gotta say like the reason, the cause of you stopping those people. Good. And then I also get it. It also doesn't tell me what happened when they got stopped. Mm -hmm. so yeah, maybe, like if you might have wrote all the black people tickets, and right? Good. Just let all the white people go free. Good. If I'm if I'm stopping all these people for like, and even if I give them both tickets, if I'm searching your car, if I'm searching the black people's car, if I'm uh, talking to them in a certain tone that's different from the white folks, that is not always captured by numbers. So racism, for example, right? We can measure racism, Deshaun, by looking at actual 
incidents, the number of like racist experiences that you have experienced, the number of times that somebody called you a nigga. But racism can't just be measured that way. It's so many different things that, that like we can't really put numbers on, but actually exists. And that's what makes that's what makes things like racism difficult because as black people, we're often asked to shine, well, how can you prove it? How can you put a number to it? There are ways of doing that, but we gotta be really thoughtful about how we do it. So again, right, using the health example. We can use all types of numeric measures to determine the health, to determine health, but if that's the only way that we do it, we're probably gonna miss some things. So here's one that I asked. So let me give you all the example that I need your help with. Are y'all listening to me? Yes. Yes, sir. So here's some qualitative variables that we have trouble putting a number to. So I can measure, we can measure who's taller, me or Maya Williams. Definitely Maya. Me. Be careful. <laughs> y'all got the <laughs> I've been drinking milk over the summer. I, I agree with a couple of that. <laughs> but how do we measure who's a nicer person? Which clearly is me also. Definitely Maya. We measure nice. How can we measure? So, like, how do we measure love? Mm, that's a little tough one, right there. It is. I believe, quite clearly, India Cheney, that my parents love me more than they love my brother and sister. Everybody knows that shit. <laughs> even though they be trying the baby? To, even though they be, I'm the youngest, not the baby, the youngest, the youngest. Uh -huh. Even though my parents be trying to lie, Kisana, like they love us all equally. Yeah. How can we measure yeah, that? Yeah, they all say that. I know. And, hey, and I want to tell y'all something. I have not, my parents have said this, but in talking to my, my boys and girls who got children, they do be loving, their, uh, people do be loving their children differently. I hate to break this to some of y'all, but it's the truth. I parents, know my mama loves me most, and yeah, I'm pa this. Parents, parents love yeah, all I'm, their I'm the favorite child. Right. Exactly. I know you are, Kisana. Mm -hmm. Parents love all their children, no yeah, doubt about no that. Bad. But they do be having favorites. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. So love, how do we measure love? What are some ways that we can measure that? How do you measure one another? Give me some numbers. Give me some numbers that oh, we can use. Numbers. Yep. Mm. How many times you give them money? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that could be one. What else? How many times you call How them a supportive day? you is to like a child. Good. So Kisana, if you are play, if you're an athlete and your sister is, a, is an athlete and I go to your games way more than the other child, we can measure that. Ma, you yeah, came, but, you went to uh, 25 of Kisana's games last year. I kept track. You only went to two of my games. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> we kind of, we kind of went through that. So yeah, right. that's true. Right. And a lot of times, parents might not even be knowing it, but like, it, it, like we keep, when, especially when we don't feel the love, we keep track. How yeah. many times, so what did, you know, how much did you spend for Kisana's birthday? But when my birthday came around, you know, I wasn't getting these new pair of joints. What's up with that? <laughs> what are some other ways? It could be that um, as adolescents, over the last year, I, I counted mama, you hugged Kisana 55 times. You only hugged me five times last year. And most times now enough, you, yeah, it is. You're like, damn. You, dang, she really be hugging me, bro. Right. <laughs> and more times than not, right, we ain't finna like count the exact amount of times. Except for like when y'all be with y'all boyfriends and stuff like that. <laughs> then y'all be counting all types of stuff. Well, on, on um, Cash App, it's a way that you can see. It's a way that you can see how much money that the person sent to you. Right. And and right. that's what you should do to my mama. She look at how much times my mama sent her money. How much time my mama sent me money. Right. And then, Who be getting the most money? Of course, it's me. Me. That ain't even right. It be like that. That ain't right. 
and, and look, sometimes like we sometimes there could be different reasons where sometimes these things could be an expression of love to Sean. Other times it can be just an expression of like maybe India is more responsible. Maybe India needs more money right now. Pretty mm-hmm. much how it goes. Yeah. You know, so, so there are always different variables. We're getting ready to get shut out in a minute, but we're I want y'all to log back on in a moment. But here's what I want y'all to take the next five minutes to think about. Here's the question of the day, and I need your answer to this, right? As of right now, on my clock, Maya Williams, it is 3.06. We're going to resume at 3.15. Here's the question I need you all to answer and to get some real thought about. In my time as a professor, one of the things that drive me most crazy, Maya Williams, after a student has turned in a real busted-ass paper, I really worked hard on this. Hard work, Kisana, is a qualitative measure. But how can we put a number? How can we measure numerically what hard work looks like academically? How can we measure that? I want y'all to think of as many different ways as possible, and we're going to open this up for discussion on the other side, okay? What's the question you're answering? Repeat it back to me. Somebody, anybody. How do you measure hard work numerically? I cannot say that word. Numerically, <laughs> you, did, you did a wonderful job in there, Jackie. No, Numerical. So don't worry about if your answer is right or wrong, Diamond Thomas. Just as many different ways that you can think of as possible that you can measure how academic hard work, academic hard work, academic hard work. How can we measure that Ashley has clearly worked way harder than Maya? How can we measure that? Use the same exact login, and we'll begin, we'll begin this discussion at 3.15 sharp. I'll see y'all on the other side. 